Hey everyone! I'm super excited today to share with you guys my dal puri recipe. Um, this is the street food style dal puri, the kind that's paper thin with really soft filling that melts in your mouth. That's just perfect with mango sour, some pepper. Um, if you're interested in learning how to make this stick around, first you want to start by boiling two and a half cups of yellow split peas to the point where it's really tender and can be easily crushed with a fork and has no grainy texture. Texture. So you want to go ahead and test it along the way and if you can crush it with a fork and there are no grains or crush it with your finger and there is no grainy texture then you're that's the right texture that you need for this dish. Once you achieve that texture go ahead and drain all of the split peas and rinse it with cold water to stop the cooking process and then we're going to go ahead and start grinding up the split peas into a smooth paste. And you can do this you don't need any special equipment just with your rolling pin and a clean surface. I'm using my roti board and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of peas on that board and then I start grinding it up into a smooth paste. Now a lot of people and a lot of recipes will tell you that you need to have a little bit of a grain in your dal puri peas for you to have good dal puri and I'm here to tell you that the kind of dal puri that I enjoyed in Guyana when I was a little girl, the ones that street vendors sold, the ones that they sold in my canteen um, in my high school was the most delicious paper thin. The peas on the inside was always really soft and this is how you achieve that dal puri. You have to have a smooth paste like filling so that when you're actually cooking the dal puri it doesn't dry out and become that grainy crumbly thing. Now don't get me wrong my mom made delicious dal puri at home when I was growing up but it was never the same as the dal puri I got in school. So if you want to learn how to make that dal puri, make sure your peas is soft and paste like the way this one is. Now you can keep going. It takes a little bit of time and patience or a lot of time and a little bit of patience to keep doing your um, peas this method. But if you don't have a food processor, this method is just as good. However, if you do have a food processor, then we can go ahead and use a food processor and it's really quick and easy to load up that piece in the food processor and just process it until it's a really smooth paste. Just being careful not to have any grains or any whole bits of split peas left behind in the food processor. Um, so here you go very quick and easy. It's already a nice smooth paste. You can notice that I have some bits of peas on the top of this um, food processor bowl that haven't been processed. So you want to push those down and just push those down and just process it again so that it could be really nice and smooth because later on that will get into your dal puri and might cause holes in your dough. So you want to get all of that out. Um, so you go ahead and do that until all of, all of it is processed into a nice smooth paste. And then we're going to season our um, split piece paste with some salt, some onion powder, some garlic powder, some ground cumin or jeera, um, and then just mix it all together. If you like your dal puri a little bit spicy, you can go ahead and put um, a little bit of spice in there. And I don't put any curry powder in here um, just because I don't want it to have that yellow color, but you can also put a pinch of curry powder in, in there if you want to as well. So go ahead and you mix that together really well. Always clean surfaces when you're working in case you have any spills. And then you're going to go ahead and just set that aside. And we're going to start working on our dough. For the dough, you want to mix three cups of flour. I'm going to use a little bit of instant yeast there, some baking powder, a pinch of sugar. That's my secret ingredient and about a cup and a quarter of water. So you mix that all together and then we're going to add the water a little bit of time. I just wanted to say here that the angle that I have this um, camera at so you guys can see what I'm doing um, is one that I couldn't really see what was being recorded and I didn't notice that the knob for my cabinet um, is in the frame so bear with me it's in a couple of the frames um, but you can still see what I'm doing just go ahead and ignore it and while we're taking a pause here why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos and um, yeah, so you can keep enjoying all of the recipes that I'm sharing 
I also want to say that um, I'm using my spatula here to mix this dough because I recently taught my seven-year-old how to mix a roti dough using a spatula and he is really enjoying it and finds it to be really easy. So I thought I would share that with you guys as well for those who are having difficulty um, mixing the dough with their hands and not sure what to do. You can easily use your spatula and continue to mix the dough using that. So for exact measurements, Check the description box. There will be a link to this recipe or you can check out methmg.com um, where the recipe will also be posted and there's a printable form so you can just click on print, have it right next to you and follow along as you're making it. Easy peasy. Go ahead and keep mixing that dough. I added that water a little bit of a time just so that it can be a little bit more manageable but you can also just add the cup and a quarter water up front and then mix it in. Um, all together. Then I'm going to use my hand to just knead this dough for a little bit. The type of kneading required for roti is not the same as bread. Um, it's more of a pinch and a push kind of kneading. So I pinch the dough together with my fingers to make sure that it's smooth throughout the dough and then I use the base of my hand to just kind of push it into the bowl and knead it that way. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn this onto a floured surface and continue to knead it so that it could be really smooth. I do this for about five minutes total just to get that dough to be nice and soft and smooth and then <laughs> there goes that doorknob again in the frame as my camera is shaking a little bit because of all the kneading I'm doing. Um, once I get that all kneaded, get all that dough mixed in, all that flour mixed in, I'm going to go ahead and put this dough into um, a clean bowl and let it um, sit for 30 minutes so it can rise a little before I'm ready to stuff it with a peas mixture. So I put it in a bowl. 30 minutes later, I'm getting ready to start stuffing um, the peas into the dough. I turn it onto the surface and knead it for a little bit more and then I cut it into 15 equal pieces. If you have one of those um, home digital scales you can also go ahead and weigh this dough and make sure it's even pieces but you can also just eyeball it and that will be just fine. So eyeball it so that you know that you have even pieces and 15 dal puri is what you're going to get from this dough and this amount of peas. So next we're going to go ahead and I'm going to knead this into a little smooth ball because I really want the dough to be nice and smooth when I'm ready for stuffing um, so that we can have some really beautiful dal puri. So that's um, the 15 dough balls that I've rolled out and then now we're ready to stuff the dough balls. So I add a little bit of flour and I'm going to roll the dough ball out un until it's a, a nice thin disc. Usually people will do this with their hands, but I found over time that rolling it out really provides an even smooth surface. And when you do this, your dal puri peas in the center gets evenly distributed when you're rolling it out. Then I'm going to brush that with some oil. The oil that I'm using here is a light cooking oil. I'm using sunflower oil, but you can also use canola oil or your oil of choice. And I'm using um, ice cream scoops so that I can have even amounts of the dal puri piece filling in each um, dal puri. And so I use one scoop of uh, dal puri piece filling uh, per dal puri and you don't want to over stuff your dal puri because that will cause it to break apart when you're rolling it and break apart when you're trying to cook it so you want to make sure you have even amount so if you have an ice cream scoop use that if you don't use a um a kitchen spoon use on a spoon that you would eat with and just make sure it's equal amount so there you could see all of the dal puri already stuffed and ready to be cooked and now for the cooking process you want to start with a nice clean surface again get your dal puri cover it with a lot of flour so that it doesn't stick to the board and then add some flour to your rolling pin before rolling out so that it doesn't stick to the rolling pin either and then we're going to roll it out into a nice thin dal puri ready for cooking so you want to keep rolling it you can see some air pockets have already started to form you want to be really gentle with your dal puri because you don't want it to pop or you don't want it to tear um, make sure it's really floured that your surface is really floured and your rolling pin is really floured and gently roll it out um, into a nice thin roti or dal puri if you may once you've got that really nice and rolled out we're going to go ahead and start cooking process so 
pick it up really easily with your hands move it to a hot towel or skillet I don't oil my towel before I put the dal puri down I just put it down on there first and um, this is on medium to low heat because the type of dal puri that I'm trying to make the one that I bought when I was in school never had any brown marks on it it was just really soft and tender so I don't want any brown marks on mine and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it brush it with oil try to get any pieces that I think might pop open then I'm gonna flip it again brush it with some more oil again this is the kind of oil the oil I'm using is sunflower oil where you want to make sure you use a light cooking oil like canola oil or vegetable oil or sunflower grapeseed oil but don't use um, olive oil it just doesn't give it the type of texture and flavor that I'm going for and then you want to flip it again and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press on parts that I think are opening so that it do doesn't swell up but I'm gonna press on those parts so it can really seal so that the heat can puff up the dalpuri and cause that separation of layers and cook the peas on the inside at the same time and once I get it to puff off really well and separate really well it's done I'm gonna take it off and continue to cook the other dalpuri until I'm all done cooking there's no clapping needed for this type of roti for this dal puri so just go ahead fold it over keep it covered so that it could stay nice and warm and and, and moist and then i wanted to just show you guys what this dal puri looks like on the inside so you can see look at the layers of dough look at how paper thin they are look at the peas it's not dry and this is the kind of dal puri that you just need some pepper sauce or some mango sour and I promise you it, it's just delicious um, and it's the kind that they sell at street food places in Guyana so I hope you try this recipe I hope you subscribe and happy cooking <laughs>